True. <laughs> Man, if there's one thing I can't stand, it's when <laughs> Jim Crawford. Oh, wait, never mind. That's sorry. <laughs> Different Ooh, show. Different show. This. <laughs> <laughs> I love I the idea. A nickel for every time that guy. <laughs> I love the idea that he's also like, he was waiting on with bated breath to tune into this like he came in right in just as you were saying that and he's sitting he's there like, like Walters! Walters! <laughs> <laughs> his arch rival jeremy cobb he has to keep an keep an eye on him well I, I will i will tell you i will tell you my uh my jeremy crawford story though it is a harmless one is uh way back uh after the stream of many eyes so in 2018 uh we all went out for drinks afterwards i think you were there lindsay and one of the things I asked him is I was like, why why are there half elves and half orcs, but not half other creatures? Why aren't there like half dwarves? Why aren't there this? And of course he gives me an encyclopedic and canonically accurate answer as to why orcs can do it and elves can do it. And orcs kind of used to be this infectious disease basically. And I was like, yeah, none of that makes sense. And I'm gonna make a half halfling and I'm gonna call it a quarterling. Oh, and he man. was like, you, you can, but you shouldn't. In Alkaline, in our show, our half halfling, half celestial Crawford. That's why the baby was named Crawford. I named gotcha. it after okay, yeah. him. Like, it makes sense I'm, now. I'm gonna do a half halfling, and I'm going to call it a quarterling, and I'm going to name it after you, Jeremy Crawford. So that's uh, that's, that's where that baby came from. <laughs> that his legacy. That was what he needed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There it was uh, his greatest you, legacy. That's yeah, he's done a couple things, but uh, in, in, <laughs> that was in, only twenty five percent of his legacy. It, yeah. It's the topper on the wedding cake. It's the topper on the wedding cake. But where do your eyes go when you look right. at the wedding cake? Yep. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who've already joined us, we're just sort of uh, chilling here, giving people a chance to come and tune in, and then we'll kick it off right at the top of the hour. So uh, you can probably see us. I'm pretty sure hear us. And uh, if you yep. can't see us yet, it's uh, that is a shame because there's a beautiful assemblage of humanity on the screen right now. But uh, and half be able to... humanity. <laughs> hey. Just saying. I'm just saying, you, you know, I mean, um, you being um, uh, an actual uh, half elf, uh, a fake creature of some sort would make a lot more sense, Al Alquin. I'm a quarter <laughs> elf, but thank you. I'm only an elf. Only my only my grandmother was, was an elf. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm just saying, a lot of a lot more things would uh, start to add up here, if uh, you know, if you've low key been holding out on us all this time. I've been very upfront about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually, that is true. I would yeah. say immediately. I immediately clocked out the second day. Now. It's one of the first like, oh, things yeah. that yeah. you said just, when we met. I'm just, I'm just. Well, apparently he's a different elf uh, based on his social media standing. But I'm like, if I've ever met an actual Eladrin, it's you. I'm just saying. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm a, I'm a synth wave Eladrin. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, there you go. That's a new subclass, uh, Chris Lindsay. That one's on the house. Is uh, since Wave of Ladrin. I'm, I'm from the place in uh, Jeremy, you Jeremy, Jeremy in the background. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for our production overlords uh, who are lurking in the back, right at the top of the hour, we can we can kick it off. It's always a pet peeve of mine. I realize it takes time for people to show up, but when you delay, you punish the people who are on time. So, uh -huh. <laughs> like, yeah. Do that. Now, I know uh, for, for our UK retinue here, I know uh, Jeremy and Jasper, you were both on your North American world tour, which I'm pretty sure, Jeremy, you're still on this side of the pond. But Jasper, yep. are you back over in England or are you still over here? I am back over in rainy England, yes. Mm -hmm. It's actually raining here today, so I guess it's not not so different. It's like, look at that. <laughs> we're, we're, we're building yeah. bridges. <laughs> I live in Seattle area. It's uh, always raining. It's true. We have your weather. But hey, look at that. It's the top of the hour. So, all right, y'all, let's get to getting.
and welcome to our first of perhaps many Ask Me Anything AMA sessions for D&D in a Castle. <sighs> All right. Yes. Uh, I am your host and humble dungeon master, B. Dave Walters. And I want you to know, while we were running that beautiful video just now, uh, this little window comes up. It says, you're in the back room. Only the host can see you. So I did the forbidden dance for the, for the good people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that are running this, you know, a little, little, little something extra for the outtakes. Uh, so we are here to talk about d and in the castle, uh, what it is, who we are, uh, why we've participated in it, why we think you should participate in it, and just sort of uh, talk a little bit and ask each other questions. You also can submit your questions. Um, I think now completely ignore me if they've already given you question instructions, but otherwise write the word question in all caps in front of it. So the people that are pulling the questions, it'll make their life easier. They'll funnel them over to us. We will ask the questions live as we go. So, but first, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna triple up on this here. I would like our humble dungeon masters here to do uh, to get tell me two things: who you are, you know, where who you are, where where people might know you from, and what is D and D in a castle? What is D and D in a castle? Okay, uh, and I'm going to go in the order that you all are on my screen. So we are going to be starting with Mr. Jeremy Cobb. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeremy Cobb. I am one third of the podcast Three Black Halflings, also the resident GM for Three Black Halflings. Uh, and what is D&D in a castle? D&D in a castle is an opportunity to travel to a real medieval castle and get to play with and rub shoulders with some of the best dungeon masters in the world. Uh, it is a once in a lifetime opportunity unless you happen to be friends with one of the dungeon masters, but most people aren't. And so for you, it is most likely a once in a lifetime opportunity and it is an absolute blast. Excellent. Uh, Mr. Jasper Cartwright. Hello everyone. Uh, I am Jasper William Cartwright. I am another third of the Three Black Halflings. Uh, I am uh, currently kicking off two new podcasts as well this year. So if you're into motion capture, I've got a performance capture podcast coming out and a games and feelings. I'm joining that on a semi-permanent basis, which is super exciting. Uh, and what would I say, Dun uh, what would I say D&D the Castle is? I would say that it is a once in a lifetime uh, experience, an all encompassing experience uh, of all the D D magic you could possibly imagine over a over three days it's wonderful excellent uh friend to all mankind and ageless beauty chris Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know about ageless but uh, uh I, am, <laughs> I am a i am a product manager uh for dungeons and dragons at wizards of the coast and a dungeon master of many decades um hence the ageless part i suppose and uh for me D, D in a castle is the best uh basically summer camp spring camp winter camp fall camp you pick your time of year camp that i can go to for a vacation and hang out with people who love all the things i love Excellent. Uh, Travis and Caitlin. Hello, I'm Travis Van Groff. And I am Caitlin Stats, and we are the Fool and Scholar of Fool and Scholar Productions, and we create... Audio horror uh, like Dark Dice, uh, a D&D &D podcast that's rather spooky and fun. And also... I would say that we consider D&D in a Castle to be an escape. You get to escape reality and fully immerse yourself in the fantasy world that you've grown to love over the years and try a completely new story as part of an absolute just dream, an escape from reality. That's what I think it feels like. <laughs> I appreciate that you two just coordinated that right in front of us without saying anything. I watched you do that at the castle more than once. You just look at each other and you just knew the thing. That's very, that's very impressive. <laughs> Um, excellent. Uh, Guy. Hello, I'm Guy from How to Be a Great GM on YouTube, and uh, I, I've been running games for very, very, very many, 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 many years. And I think that d d in a castle for me is really just it's permission to play Dungeons and Dragons for 24 hours nonstop and just just to have fun doing that and i don't think 
anyone actually plays for 24 hours i think they usually go 25 26 27 i'm not looking at some of the dms here where it was like 30 where sleep was something that happened at breakfast time really uh so it's it's just great uh, yes, that is true. Uh, we're not trying to out Jeremy Cobb so much as stare intently at Jeremy Cobb. Uh, and last but certainly not least, uh, Mr. Alquin Gersh. Hi, I'm uh, Alquin Gersh. I'm a professional dungeon master and Twitch streamer. Uh, you might have seen me on some shows, like some of B Dave's shows. Um, let's see dini in a castle to me uh i think i don't know if dave and i were the ones who came up with this uh at one of the first ones that we did i think it was in like 2019 but we called it like summer camp for like D, &D nerds uh and it definitely feels like that uh the other thing i really think about too when i think about D, &D in the castle is a lot of the stuff that comes up about it is like play with world-class dms um and while i think that's true the big thing that really stands out to me uh, is the fact that you're playing with world-class players. A lot of the other players who are coming to this are some of the most deeply invested people I've seen in the hobby or lifestyle, whatever you want to call it. Um, and those are, I think, a big part of the memories that people are going to have when they uh, when they come back from the castle is the actually the other people they played with. I mean, some people come with their own groups, um, so it's kind of... A vacation for their dm to actually get a chance to play but a lot of the people that meet there who didn't know each other before i know they stay in contact i know they keep playing together um so yeah that's what i'd see it as it's kind of like after summer camp yeah sure you remember some of the counselors and it's great but it's really the other kids that you met at D, &D nerd summer camp that are really gonna you're gonna carry with you forever yeah, absolutely. And obviously, I agree with everything that everybody here said and just the, the, the immersive aspect of it. I mean, it's something I heard years ago is you the mark of a good idea is when you hear it. If you say to yourself, why didn't I think of that? That's when you know something was a good idea. And the first time I heard D&D &D in a castle, I was like, of course, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's D&D in a castle uh it's 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 immersive it's experiential i would say it's not necessarily once in a lifetime because we got people that have come multiple times some of them go multiple times in a, in a row but uh if uh if you you can put it on your bucket list as something to make happen you absolutely should now full disclosure i got a little list of questions here but we're already getting a ton of questions coming in from you all so uh this mm -hmm. one um I will actually answer this first one, um, and this is from Margaret Parson. Hey, Margaret. Uh, hey, hope you're all well. From someone budgeting for a future visit to the castle, what are the character creation rules for the adventure? I'm 99% sure they're different for everybody. Uh, I know some of my fellow creators worked with their tables months in advance. Uh, I myself gave uh, very minimal uh, <laughs> guidelines. I was like, level 20, do whatever you want. I was like, try to break the game, do your worst. And that was literally all they got from me. And I think I was like three magic items. So uh, it varies wildly there. Um, the second question um, I will put out to whoever wants to take this from Mandy Croy. Uh, can you be novice players or should you wait until you're more of a seasoned player for this opportunity? That looks like Chris Lindsay is one to jump on that one. The first time I, I dungeon mastered at D&D in the castle, one of my players sat down to play Dungeons and Dragons for the very first time at D&D in the castle. And they had an absolutely fantastic experience. Yep. I completely agree with that. I would say, if anything, if you are very new, maybe let your DM know so that they might they might handhold a little more, explain some things to you more. Uh, but you shouldn't be threatened by that. Does anybody want to add anything to that? I know Chris pretty much nailed it. Yes, Jasper. Yeah, I was just going to say that one of my favorite things uh, generally about the castle is getting to meet all these new players uh, and like fresh players, like new players who've never played the game before come up with the best and most unique ideas. Like I love having new players at a table because they say stuff and the whole table goes, you want to do what with that spell? And it's amazing. Like it's an incredible moment. Everyone's like, oh, that would totally work. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. And it's a really exciting moment. So please, if you're new, come because it's like, you're some of my favorite players uh, to play with. So yeah, I would definitely encourage new people for sure. 
A absolutely. Alquin, I saw you. You were reaching there? Um, yeah, I think that the other players, too, are very cognizant of that. I mean, I think there are very seasoned players uh, who do get a lot out of the fact that, you know, they're able to play at a very kind of high level. But, you know, like I was saying before, I, I think that the other players are very supportive of that, too. So if you are a new player uh, or anywhere where you are on your spectrum of experience, I think that um, people are going to help you. You know, uh, and there's there's a real community feeling uh, about it, and I think that also applies to people with different levels of so socialization or shyness, or you know, if you're somewhere in a, a different place on the the spicy neurodiversity spectrum, uh, everybody is very uh, helpful and supportive about that stuff. So I I would not be warned off if you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to play this game in a you know a more public forum or or around people i don't know but like because everybody's very supportive about it regardless of your level of experience um yeah we have a bunch of questions coming in this is beautiful thank you please keep them coming because uh if you ask more than we can get to we'll lightning round at the end of it and just kind of go through them here um i'm gonna put this one out to everybody but i'm gonna i would ask to start with guy uh but uh, I put this to the community. What is your favorite part about DMing D and D in a castle? Oh my goodness, uh, that's that's a, that's an impossible question to answer. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you seven seconds to stall. That's from Elizabeth Johnson <laughs> Brizolara. Apologies if I said your beautiful name wrong. All right, now you got to jump on that grenade. <laughs> okay, so here is the greatest thing about playing D and D in a castle. It, there are so many different aspects that are awesome for me the biggest thing it's already been mentioned but i i cannot re-emphasize this enough is that you have this dedicated time to play the game and in between that you have meals where you are still with your group and you're chatting and you're you're conversing and my group were torn between wanting to hang out in between these sessions with me their dm and also not wanting to have me there so they could plot and plan and connive and decided in the end, you know what, they should just, it, we were just one big, one big group. So the best part is, is this, this sense of everybody's there, everyone's there to have fun. Uh, and, and I think something that's important to, to point out, and this kind of uh, links back to the previous question as well about new players, is that each of the GMs does have a little write-up on their profile page of the type of game they run. So you can see if you are more into the rules kind of stuff or the technical type, excuse me, the tactical stuff or the more storytelling kind of stuff. So it, it's just, yeah, that that sense of coming togetherness is just amazing. Excellent. Uh, yes, Travis. Okay, so like the hardest part of D and D, and everyone agrees with this, is setting up a schedule and getting people to show up at the same time. And you've got like twenty four plus hours to tell a story and like really get into a full campaign, and that's amazing. <laughs> like I can't tell you how many campaigns I've finished. It's it's fewer than like the fingers I have in my hand. But uh, that D and D the Castle adventure was was definitely one of them, and I'm, I'm really proud of that. So much fun. So. Getting to set aside time in life is generally very difficult. So having the opportunity, especially if you are coming to play for your first time, uh, having the opportunity to fully immerse yourself and not have to worry about setting up the times to do it is an amazing opportunity to really get yourself into the game. And I also think that we came away having met amazing people at our table oh, yeah. who we now talk to on a regular basis because they share the same passions that we share. So not only are you sitting down with fellow players, but you're sitting down with people who are generally on the same kind of, for us, the same nerd level of, okay, yes, this is what we want to talk about. This is what we want to be doing. And for us, that was absolutely the best part. Excellent. Uh, Mr. Cobb. So uh, for me, my favorite part, I think I would have to echo uh, what Guy said, which is that the fact that you have a group of people who are all uh, like bought in, like literally uh, very emotionally and psychologically just committed uh, from the get go. Like as soon as you start, you can feel the energy in the room where everybody's like, oh, here it is. Uh, and and it's so exciting even in, in between sessions, as Guy said, and like the, the emotional moments that you get to, you wouldn't think that in uh in just 24 hours you would have folks crying but uh, like uh, i remember one of my campaigns day two 
uh, folks were role playing so hard they made themselves cry. It wasn't even anything I did. I was just sitting there watching while people were like, my character is discovering things about themselves after the adventure we just went on. And it's like, we're like halfway done. Uh, so it's so rare that you get that level of uh, emotional commitment. Uh, and it's just, it's just a wonderful time. I, I, I will say, <laughs> It sounds weird when I say it, but I have a reason. I gauge my success as a dungeon master by how quickly I can make someone cry. Because <laughs> it, it can be happy tears. It can be happy tears. It's because if a person is crying, they are that feeling and that in the moment. Like it is it is occurring to them in, in so powerfully that I'm like, fantastic. Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, this one, uh, I kind of put it out for, for whoever wants to answer it. How is d d in a castle different from other events? I mean, I know we all do a bunch of cons uh, and have been all over. How is this different? Where whoever wants to say. Guy. One of my favorite things is, uh, talking about other conventions, put, putting those aside, d d in a castle, you get this amazingly majestic room and it doesn't matter which room you get allocated because there's so many different dm there's dming rooms all over the castle and and every room has 400 years worth of history built into it there's nothing plastic there's nothing being fabricated these rooms have had 400 years of english history of knights of cavaliers of all kinds of things going on and and it it creates a, a an environment unlike anything else really that you can have you're not sitting in a hotel conference room or or somewhere that that is not almost purpose built for this thing because when you're sitting there and you look up at the ceiling and there's certain rooms uh, there's one room i particularly love you look up at the ceiling and there are these ancient carvings glaring down at you uh, which Jeremy Crawford had attack the players, by the way, which was was really cool. Uh, and then you look out over the the rolling fields towards battlefields in Scotland, where there were terrifying things waiting to invade. It's it it doesn't get better than that, and I think that's that's one of the big things that it adds. Also, the castle super haunted. Lily's in there, and like stuff has happened. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. There's actual ghosts. Yeah. Um, Anyone else want, want, want to add to that, how it's different? Three, two, one. You nailed it, guy. It was too beautiful. Uh, perfect. Uh, you guys are asking a lot of questions. This is fantastic. I'm telling you, do keep them coming because if it, worst case, we'll lightning round at the end. Uh, this one is from Krista Bratton. How do the one shots work? Uh, which I will answer uh, because I'm going to answer what I think you're asking me, and then I'm going to ask what you, answer what you actually wrote. Um, they're campaigns. They're three days, so it is a, a beginning, middle, and end of one long game that stretches over the three days. Uh, there are intermittent one shots where one of the DMs, it might be one of us or someone who is there to do just that, will run a specific session at a specific time. But if so, it is clearly advertised as such. So it's kind of a either or there. All right. Uh, Dan Greenfield. Oh, this is a tough one. Again, for whoever wants to jump on it. What's one of the most memorable moments from a session in the castle? Uh, I got one, uh, I was just thinking about it. the game that I was talking about, uh, on day three, one of the characters had in their backstory that they had, they had this book that had like absorbed the soul of their mentor. Uh, and it was also their, basically their warlock patron, uh, this book of secrets that are so far beyond any knowledge that any mortal can have. And they were in like this final battle where things were looking incredibly dire. Like half the party was down and it was, the rest of them were, had one foot on the grave, the other on a banana peel. Uh, and they proceeded to basically knowing that this could mean the end of their character, read from the book deeply to gain enough of the knowledge to defeat the menace that faced them. Uh, unfortunately, uh, they did fail the, the constitution saving throw and their character was absorbed into the book but as part of that they saved the rest of the party and it was like we were playing it was like past midnight on the final day so everybody's like they're like gripping onto their chairs like we can get through it come on and like people are like looking through all of their characters pages to be like what can i do to try and stop this and then it's like this moment of like oh <gasps> 
they they sacrifice themselves and everybody's there like spellbound uh and the whole like epilogue of that campaign was just such an emotional time for everybody it was a wonderful uh wonderful wonderful classic D D moment for sure mm, excellent uh anybody else have a moment they'd like to share yes guy uh so something that has consistently blown away all of the players and myself are the guest npcs that run around which are these professional performers that the castle provides and then we as dms sometimes get to brief to give them sort of bits and pieces of information and there was one performer who uh i had given her the instruction to enter the room that i was dming in in a dramatic way uh because her character was being chased by a uh, just a whole pack of one t who were invading her city and this i had all done via whatsapp to let my so my players didn't know what was going to happen and i sent on whatsapp go come in you enter and i said and you see a figure running towards you she barrels through a door and as i said that the npc burst in through the door but she did it so dramatically that several of the players leapt to their feet wondering what on earth had just happened and was she okay and they rushed over to her and she's like i'm absolutely you know i I'm, as a player as the character i'm i'm distraught and i'm dying but as the human i'm fine but the the npcs were just just marvelous uh, and 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 just brought so much life to it um just spectacular uh, absolutely spectacular awesome uh yes chris so uh, uh i had a moment in the game where because <clears throat> we personalize so much for our players as we work out their characters ahead of time uh, i had a, a warlock in the game with a patron with a serious connection and and a, and a goal to convert as many party members over to her infernal patronage as she could possibly manage which she quietly and subtly worked on throughout the game at a moment in the game when the party were in the middle of a heist on a mind flare colony which already was a very tense situation one party member had the mind flare's tentacles wrapped around their head the mind flare had made the hit and it was going to suck her brains out and we froze time at that moment and I pulled her aside and the infernal patron made his pitch at that point to her character and uh, she totally bought in committing herself and her dead brother's souls in ex you know she didn't realize in exchange for two souls of the family member of the warlock and you walk around the table and 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 you whisper into the warlocks here and you tell them you get to pick two to come back and on one side of the table i have a player who has a smile that looks like she just ate the canary and on the other side i have a table with their head in their hands going i should not have just done that and the the tension at the table was palpable at that moment but the mind flare's head exploded and for the moment she was safe <laughs> not only i love that story so much when you told it to me i've actually done that the next time i had somebody that was about to die i was like time stop asmodeus is like <laughs> you know like <laughs> are you sure you want to die what if you could live it um, really is so a good dm trick yeah <laughs> <laughs> that was on the house. There you go. And that, that is an aspect of this that I don't think any of us mentioned is, is you're having these experiences. You're also getting to see and learn how we all do what it is that we do that you then can take back and, and apply there. Um, we have a comment that came in right here uh, from Diomedes Industries. How many bits do I have to pay to ensure that all the DMs kill off every one of Travis's characters? Uh, so, like everything has a price, Travis. I'm here to tell you, everything has a price. <laughs> this this can be done, <laughs> but just your characters, mine just mine. Have. Right, exactly. So I, yes. I have, I did have a moment. Um, it, it's 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 a there's, there's a two step part to this. The first step is Caitlin isn't really seen as the voice. She writes a lot of the things that we we make into adventures, and she writes the stories that we make that are creepy. And there was a moment at the table where she got to be an NPC, and all of a sudden. Uh, everyone's like, oh, she's the creepy one. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then we lead on to this, the actual, my favorite part is we're, we're talking and the party goes, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to split up the party. So then Caitlin and I 
Locke dies. Okay, you take those two. <laughs> and then we split up the party. <laughs> it was very unexpected and very fun. And when they got together, they didn't have all the information because they couldn't pay attention to the other side. It was very fun. A benefit. Cody Yemming. Yes. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> that is excellent uh i know we all could we could talk the rest of the day just here on memories but i want to make sure we, we get through all these questions here uh two of them well w one uh I'm, I'm gonna answer and then i'll put the other one out here uh, are all the games 5e or other versions of the rpg played for the most part they're mostly 5e i, I know there was definitely one shots and whatnot that were done with some other versions uh but the same thing it should be clearly labeled when you read uh the the dm outline of it in the sequence of events uh that was from robert schmidt eric weingold will you ever run classes on how to DM. Uh, while we have excellent tutorial content from a number of people here, I myself have as well. I won't super plug it, but it's pinned at the top of my Twitter, at B. Dave Walters. Uh, anybody else? I know how to, a guy, you do great GM. Do any, just raise your hand if you put out GM tip content. Yeah, there you go. Jasper does too, so there you go. Jeremy does. So, also, hello to Eric. I played with Eric a few times, including at Dean Dina Castle. So hey. Yeah, I had Eric as a, as a player as well. Yep. Yeah. Shout out to the homie. Uh, Margaret Parson, um, acts of God or whatever aside, how likely is it that this adventure continues next year and beyond? Some people like mine, their finances are a bit tight, but they still might want to save up for it. Uh, do, have any of you done uh, events that went into perpetuity or were your things fairly self-contained? Uh, I think uh, is the question that we're, we're, we're running a long-term campaign over multiple events at the castle, or is it that the castle is going to continue to, to, to run events? Yeah, uh, I think it, I think it was the second one was the well, answer was, to the question. Maybe, well, but I would say, again, acts of God aside, yeah, D&D and the castle is going to continue, God willing, as long as, you know, Cam and Tara want to keep doing it. Uh, but I, yes, I do have a story related to the first part of that question, though, which mm -hmm. is kind of, kind of relevant. Um, if if there are some dms who've had the same groups come back year over year mm. and have continued their campaigns so i know that's a thing that can happen if you are committed to coming back and there are enough people who are the same in the group uh to make that you know a good use of the time i know that that happens um my players from round seven are coming over to my house uh tonight to play and we've been playing for about the last month since they got back because they're locals they live close enough to they wanted to continue their campaign from october so i've been doing that <laughs> so mm -hmm. not something like not usually a set of circumstances that can, are going to happen for for most people but um but yeah and that's the other thing too is like you could always take your character story from the game that you play and bring it back to your your own group work with your own dm or if you run a group of your own you know you can use that as a building block for something else there's no reason why this thing can't spin off into into other things if that's what you want to do you know and the circumstances allow yes jeremy uh, i was going to add on to that some of us run uh private games like if you wanted to hire us to run so if you and your group we're like, hey, we want to keep this campaign going. And you all got together. Uh, a lot of us, you could just hire to help to run the game for you. Uh, in many cases, probably remotely, but on an ongoing basis. <laughs> I reiterate, everything has its price. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, uh, Travis? We, uh, well, all year are not really planning on continuing campaigns because we've got a different group. Uh, we, we oftentimes play test modules that we're making uh, that we release later. And some of the people created by our, our players last time have made it in as NPCs. Or, so that, that's been quite or entire fun. areas that we formed to fit these players we were playing with the D&D in the castle. <laughs> Sorry. These players that we were playing with the D&D in the castle, uh, we actually so much enjoyed what their character and the, the storyline around their character brought to our creation, that we added in these new sections and these new people, because uh, it's just, amazing to get that input and that imagination from outside absolutely yeah so I, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't want to i don't want to bust anybody out but i know for certain there was pub content that got published was play tested at every round of being a dana castle i've been at yeah that definitely happens um from brian d harrison do you have any table crossovers planned is that something that evolves or happens spontaneously uh i guess are you in the same room or are they spread out in separate rooms uh, again i will speak to that um 
Every round I've done, we ended up with at least some crossover, but it was spontaneous. The first castle where Alquin and I did it, it was heavily planned uh, that we all were interrelated, but that takes a lot of planning. It's just logistically very hard. Um, I found a lot of spontaneous crossovers. Like one thing that happened was at my table, um, there was, um, so what I did is I ran the same event three rounds in a row, the same adventure three rounds in a row, which really only means I had the same inciting incident and then people go vastly different directions because that's just the nature of the beast. And there was a, a zombie tyrannosaur in Schult, which if you know the zombie tyrannosaurs, this covered in zombies and it vomits zombies. And one of them was able to mind control undead. Just that was just a thing their character could do. And they turned and made the tyrannosaur just walk into the ocean. Like they didn't even fight it. They were like, just walk that way. Elisa Pearl was running a underwater aquatic campaign. And I was like, hey, Elisa, we just sent a zombie tyrannosaur out into the ocean. So do what you will with that. And she did have it show up in her campaign, which they were just like, what? Like we're Tritons and Murfolk. What is this? Abomination. And that was just a fun thing. Uh, did any of the, uh, you others do any like cool crossover stuff or anything of the like? Yes, Jasper. Yeah, we, uh, it wasn't technically a crossover because uh, we were actually uh, co-DMing at the time, but me and Jeremy uh, co-DMed a pretty epic adventure in which we literally took it like one day uh, at a time. And like that led to some really fun stuff, which included Jeremy deciding on the first day that the one of the NPCs would have like a really kind of, really kind of gruff, like New York kind of accent like this. And I literally turned and looked to him and was like, why have you done this to us? Because, of course, the party immediately said, we'll take them on the adventure, the whole adventure. So that meant for three days, me and Jeremy rotating, having this accent that was just absolute chaos on our, our vocal folds. So uh, that was, I, I think, a kind of a fun crossover between me and Jeremy. I'm just glad that I got to share some of the burden, at least. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Um, now, this one is a little more in-depth. This is from Daniel Oliveira. Are there opportunities to interact with the DMs at other tables over the course of the events? Did any of you all get to interact? Well, yeah, Alquin. Um, I will say that uh, there is a lot of socializing with uh, with the, the other. Just because you are having a, a campaign you know, with one DM doesn't mean that you're not going to see the other DMs at the castle. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities to hang out at meals uh, and in the library bar and there are other activities that are organized that will have you interacting with them. Um, and it's not just like, you know, we DMs all sit apart at, at some separate table and, you know, socialize amongst ourselves. Like, the, you you will have opportunities to interact with, uh, with other DMs, um, which is great for me. I've gotten to meet a great many of my heroes uh, doing this stuff. So yeah, the, there's definitely an opportunity for that. And everybody, I mean, of course you always have to respect people's, you know, boundaries and those sort of things, but um, you know, but you, there are, there are all of the DMs I, I've seen at the castle have been very open about, uh, you know, making time to, to interact with, uh, with the guests who are not just their own players. So. Yeah. Guy. Yeah. I, we actually even got to play with, uh, uh players and gms alike those one shots that they run um oftentimes don't run when the gms are running their official sessions and uh they were running i think it was uh just dungeons and dragons as in the first edition technically and i couldn't resist not playing in that i mean it was going to be crazy chaos to step back in time and there were a bunch of players that joined in in there and we all just became players and the dm took us on this this great evening adventure i think it was it was a lot of fun um and yeah you you get to interact with all of the the, the the dms if you go up to them and say hey i would love to chat to you about this idea i don't think there's anyone who's gonna go no leave me alone i, I don't think it's gonna happen <laughs> Well, I was like, now I have to. But yes, you're you're right. <laughs> Again, like Alquin said, some people uh, need their time. There is a spectrum of introversion to extroversion. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, if a person's out in public, they want to talk to you. I see you, Chris. But Caitlin had her uh, had her hand up there. 
So there's also opportunities to do things related to Dungeons and Dragons or just fun fantasy stuff uh, outside of the game. So there's the the banquet and then there's the ball. And I know that Travis was very often found by people at the painting table, painting minis and having nice conversations. So his social battery lasts a lot longer <laughs> than mine. So you don't usually find it there's at the, escape room. At the uh, and oh, the escape room as well. Mm. So there's definitely a lot to do and there's ample opportunity, like they said, to interact with other DMs um, or find Travis crouched over <laughs> painting. <laughs> uh, yes, Mr. Lindsay. Uh, one of the things that I, I ended up doing this last time was I had a copy of Warriors of Kryn with me and uh, I sat down with a variety of players from all other tables uh, and some of the Dungeon Masters as well and we played uh, this little you know, I want to say little, it's not really a little, this is really cool war game experience at a table. And and I hadn't done that previously. And now that I have, the idea of bringing a board game to run, like say in the evenings when people just who want to just sign up and hang out with you and play a board game or whatever uh, is really appealing, particularly if that board game is themed along the same lines as what you're doing with your Dungeons and Dragons game. So uh, I would encourage you to definitely reach out to all the DMs that are there while you're there, engage with them, and uh, uh, and you know, don't hesitate to have great conversations. I, I will say there's a uh, there's a, a couple of bars and there is a courtyard, which is that background there, that courtyard. So usually at night after the games, it's there's organically just like bunches of people form that it's pretty easy to find folks to hang out with. Um, excellent. Um, Dransky's RPG map said the only thing more immersive would be D and D in a dungeon. My room was a dungeon. So um, like, it, it happens actually. Um, and one of my, my, yeah. In fact, yeah. the first time I met Caitlin and Travis, uh, they were recording the creaking of the gates for their <laughs> podcast. I just saw them in there and they were going, ee, 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 ee. and I'm like, I don't know what this is, but I I'm not here to kink shame. And then they told me what it was they were doing. I had a good uh, doors. very good doors. They were I had a, a room when I was running Spelljammer that was uh, a wood paneled room and it, it felt like a ship's cabin, you know. Yeah. So I think. And there are a lot of opportunities to lean into that. I think that a lot of the DMs do use that of like, you know, uh, I'm sure Travis and, and Caitlin did a lot of dungeon-y stuff in their dungeon. We never <laughs> saw the light of day. We never I saw the know. light of day during ours. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell. I literally have a scar on the top of my head from hitting my head on a stone archway in the dungeon <laughs> that was in there. So I have bled for D&D in a castle. <laughs> um, uh, excellent. Uh, Scott Brizolara. Obviously, the main campaign is a big draw, but can you speak to any of the one-shots you're planning or running or participating in? Did any of you do one-shots in addition to your games? Yes, Jasper. Yeah, so I got to run one shots. Uh, this was super fun, actually, because it was very much just left up to us uh, what we wanted to do. These were kind of extracurricular, as it were. They were, um, you know, what like what do you want to run? Uh, what will get people excited and stuff? And so I said, well, I'll do like a sort of customizable build your own one shot, uh, where everything I do is basically built around the players and what they wanted in the game. So. So I had like a little questionnaire sheet, which I made players that signed up uh, fill in, which was like, you know, what have you never seen before in a DD and d campaign? Uh, what is like, you know, have you ever played high level before? Uh, you know, what kind of vibe do you like? Do you want uh, blood and gore? Do you want, uh, you know, like uh, lots of uh, political intrigue? Do you, do you want like something kind of cutesy and like a little fun kind of Hobbit style adventure or something? And um uh, we had such a blast doing those. We spent the first hour building the uh, kind of almost like lore of the world and of the group together so that the group came in uh, straight away, kind of knowing each other, having a shared backstory. Uh, and then we literally got into it. And I was so surprised. Again, I think it speaks to uh, what some other people have said here. It's like the absolute world-class players that come to this event because by the end of this like three, four-hour session, 
and people were like screaming and shouting and you know out of chairs running around the room you know and this was literally just after like a three hour session let alone a you know 24 hours of playing over 24 uh, over three days or whatever so um yeah the the one shots are an absolute blast that's just what i did other people have like uh, be never said like run very different kinds of games uh they are super super fun and a great way i think if you're uh you're like oh i really want to just like break out of the that character for a minute and do something else they're like just a really really cool way of doing that definitely recommend signing up for the one shots if you can stomach more games i mean you know it's not the fate of hearts a lot of there's a lot of gaming over these three days so you can pay, pace yourself <laughs> See, yeah you, you you would you would think being like too much gaming is is a strange thing what here's one thing that i will tell you and i tell to everybody i tell to all the dms and all the people it will go so fast it will go faster than you can possibly imagine you will get there and you will blink and you will be on the plane so make sure you like take a moment to like stop breathe it in look around the table be like holy crap i'm playing DD in a castle because otherwise you will play 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 eat play 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 eat sleep and then it's done so yeah breathe it in it is a lot uh but a lot in a good way uh mark mir friend of the show uh, could we get some fresh tea and coffee in the Cuthbert room, please? I guarantee you, it's about eight o'clock. <laughs> Whoever's in the Cuthbert room right now in Lumley Castle needs fresh tea and coffee right now. I guarantee it. Um, Mark Mir, one of our one of our DMs, also just an amazing human that everybody should follow. Um, Dan Greenfield, when does the session zero happen for groups, and how long do they typically last? Um, the our our wonderful production overlords uh, put in a note here. Uh, session zero is on arrival day. Enough time given in the 2023 session to start playing immediately. But did any of you do uh, pre session zero stuff uh, with your people to kind of yes, Alquin? Um, I usually start working with my group about a month uh, before the game because I feel like the time is so precious at the castle. Um, and like some of the other folks here, uh, I do like to really twist the knife emotionally with a lot of the, the stakes and the work in the backgrounds of the characters. So when I'm planning the adventure, when I'm, you know, trying to create as many moments as possible for those, those big cathartic things to happen, it helps to have all that prep. Um, and also so that people can really hit the ground running. Uh, the session zeros are valuable and I don't, uh, at the castle are valuable and I don't ever, it's not compulsory to do any of that sort of pre-prep, but, um, I know that there are, you know, some DMs who, who prefer that to like, to be able to, to get ahead of it. Um, and to really have the players kind of know what they're, what they're in for. And I, and honestly, like it's. It's easier for me, like I'm less nervous because I, I, I've already been talking to these people for a month and I'm just super excited to meet them and play with them. So yeah, I have a, a session, a, a month zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Caitlin. So for our next one in March, we have already started talking and texting with our players because first of all, we run a lot of horror content. So we have to make sure that we have the horror content uh, consent forms filled out so we can build our story without doing something that steps over someone's line because we want people to have a good time even if it's a terrifyingly good time. Uh, but we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to create a safe but incredibly entertaining space. Uh, and top of that, we like to use the zero session more to introduce ourselves and introduce the players to each other so that they feel like they can just hit the ground running as soon as we actually start playing the next day. Um, and because it's always nice for us as the DMs to have a little bit more time to read over what everybody's skills are, what it is that they have background wise and kind of integrate that into the story beforehand. But Sometimes you really don't need it. We didn't have that the first time we went to Dean in a castle, but now that we're doing it again, we wanted to make sure that we could go on in and have this done. The lines and veils are very important. There's someone uh, who, again, I won't, I won't bust anybody out, brought a very elaborate mini setup of a uh, snake temple and the entire campaign was snake themed. And it turns out one of their players had a violent phobia against snakes. Like they just couldn't do it. And this person had to scramble and rebuild everything to take all the snake imagery out of it. Like literally the night before. Um, yeah, so it, it is very important. I had somebody sit down at my table and tell me they were afraid of whistling. 
like neurologically, like they can't stand it. They were like, if anybody whistles, I will scream and get under the table, which of course my brain immediately was like, but of course, <laughs> <laughs> that is where my mind went immediately. I was like, I, I, I was very afraid because I'm like, it's a castle, like it's drafty. I'm like, is the wind gonna blow in the hall and freak you out? Turns out it was fine, but you never know. And it's important to find out. Uh, yes, guy. Just on those lines, um, I never figured it out, although I have heard it both ways, and this is just specifically to this particular player that I say that weird phrasing. Uh, I had mayonnaise as a phobia, and that's something that should not be mentioned or included in the game at all. Uh, and 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 just mayonnaise. And you go, is it the taste? Is it the taste? No, just mayonnaise. Just don't ever say the word mayonnaise. That's um, a pretty crazy restriction. I don't know if I could run an adventure and not. <laughs> well, you know, that was, that was the thing. It was like, okay, scrap the adventure. We're done. We're going to go play. Right. I was, I was like my Mayo Jammer campaign that I've been working on all this time. But but the important thing, and I do want you all watching, like we're joking about this, but he honored it. We would honor right. it. You know, yeah. if, if you're just like, I can't stand the color blue, it's like, we'll, we'll make it work because safety is what's most important. Now, I did say we have a lot of questions and you guys are come, keep continuing to send them in. So we're going to switch to a slight lightning round here. And here's how we're going to do it. Uh, just one of you can answer these. So just if, if something is your jam, just raise your hand. Uh, and if nobody wants to jump on it, I'll just call on somebody. It's like we're back in high school. Uh, this one I'm going to answer from Sabine Tenhove. Uh, sorry if I said that wrong. Are you looking forward to Poppet hanging out at your games again? Y'all, there's a cat named Poppet. And when she can, she has, she can get all through the castle. And when she blesses you, it is just, nah, it's just the best thing. <laughs> I was equally excited to see the cat as I was with the ghost. Um, <laughs> uh, another one from Dan Greenfield. Do any of the main campaign DMs join in as players or one shots run by other DMs? I know I did. Just raise your hand. Did you play at anybody else's table? Yeah, I definitely played at other people's tables. Uh, and so did they. Uh, Scott Brizolara, uh, for the Americans among you, having to do eight hours a day of DMing was jet lag a factor. Yeah. Not really for me. Yeah. I, I, I feel uh, um, uh, for me, uh, it's actually harder when I was coming back. Sorry, Jeremy, did you have a poppet story, by the way? Yes, I did. Oh, uh, the very final night, or was it? The, yeah, the final night that I was at the castle, uh, I happened, it was raining. Ha poppet happened to be walking by, and I managed, poppet was, you know, it was raining, poppet was wet. I had poppet stay in my room all night. Uh, slept in my bed with me. I was blessed by the castle cat. Uh, and I have, I, there's pictures on my Twitter, actually, if you want to go see, because I was so excited <laughs> that I took a bunch of pictures of her and posted them on Twitter. Uh, but it was a magical moment. One of the most magical moments of the castle for me. Pop Poppet has her own Instagram, actually. Um, <laughs> you can buy merch of Poppet. Yeah, that's why I have Poppet merch. That is true, which is yes. honestly way to monetize. Um, this was from uh dan greenfield how often do tpks happen uh i didn't hear of any did you all hear of any no eh. i'm pretty close a couple times definitely yeah. one no one. <laughs> oh there was at least one that everybody they died on purpose that is true they yeah. died on purpose yeah. yeah yeah but they did die on purpose technically technically i had a tpk because the inciting incident of my game was tell me how you died they started dead so technically <laughs> I, I did <laughs> Um, but, uh, you know, I'm past level three-ish. It's hard to die and stay dead in D&D anyway, though. Ooh. So, um, excellent. Um, let's see. I'm scrolling, scrolling. Um, uh, Sean Scanlon is... Is the use D and D beyond at the table, or is it the old way? Basically, did did you all use tech or, or character sheets? I I I was dealer's choice, but pretty much everybody chose D and D beyond. Uh, yeah. Do you all have any preference? Yeah. Uh, everybody used yeah. D and D beyond uh, when I was running stuff that would suit it. But for some of my things, I've did things which had so many custom things it would have taken me longer to build it. <laughs> so uh, for some of my some of my rounds I did last year, I did use traditional character sheets. Uh, and I think a lot of the players really liked it. They're like, oh, I've never done it this way before. 
And I'm like, oh, you babies. You sweet, sweet babies. But yeah. I made special character sheets for them, um, which they got to keep as collectibles. Uh, but usually it's kind of DM's discretion. And I think people often do both. You mix it up, whatever you're most comfortable with as a player. Yeah. Jeremy, you had some? Yes. Uh, I was going to say it's easiest to coordinate ahead of time, probably over D&D &D Beyond. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would be open to people using paper or uh, or uh, old school. Or sorry, Excellent. paper or new school, rather. <laughs> Cuneiform <laughs> tablets. or tablets. Cuneiform, exactly. engra Engrave them yeah. upon, yeah. Into <laughs> what, what, on, on, clay, on clay seals and the clay tablets, yeah. You should um, bring your wax tablet and stylus. <laughs> I'm like, this <laughs> is not an acceptable tablet. Uh, we had... So Brian D. Hansen said, uh, for future sessions, is it possible to pick a surprise me ticket for the as of yet unannounced GMs in order to secure a spot? Or is it better to wait for the GM to be an official ticket uh, to which uh, our production overlords have said yes? recommend to secure the spot the november round is already sold out completely round three sold out so we just announced today a bonus round four so there you go i would get it get Woo! it while you can um yeah. excellent uh we have uh mina lamb what things do you recommend players pack along for their adventures again one person answer this one any any suggestions on what they pack yes chris nice <laughs> <laughs> True. Bring, bring your dice. <laughs> yeah. A surprising number of people didn't have dice. That is, that is true. Uh, we, we have a special one for Travis. If we have time, we'll come back to that one at the end here. Uh, from Margaret Parson, what are the rules for or against recording? Pictures, videos, sound bites for memories. I understand that tends to be a tricky situation. Uh, I know the castle had a release and just ask permission. You know, if somebody doesn't want to be recorded, they'll tell you. And um, mm -hmm. just, yeah, don't, don't be a creeper is my suggestion there. I did have people um, recording stuff in the, the sessions, mm -hmm. but they would always ask first. And it wasn't like they were sitting there recording the whole thing. I think a lot of it is kind of like the rules at a concert. If you're the person there, like with their phone in their hand the entire time, that's kind of not okay. But, yeah. you know, if you ask beforehand and they're like, just, you know, I just want to record a quick thing to post to my Instagram stories. Like, that's great. And, you know, mm -hmm. everybody likes that. Excellent. Uh, this is our last question currently. So uh, if you have anything else, we got a few more minutes. Drop it in there. We will lightning round it here. Uh, this is from GX Barnett. What is the best level to start a short form game? I'm pretty sure we're all over the map here, but does anybody? I, I do level 20. So do, does uh, anybody have any suggestions, Chris? Six. What? Yep. Chris has six. That's, yeah, that's the best the level. <laughs> I did three. I, I mean, besides the fact that I agree sure. with you anyway, because you're the expert, that it, most classes are kind of coming to life. Like, they're doing yeah. the things that make them them around level six. I agree with that if, assessment. If I've got some experienced players, I'd like nine is fun, because you can do nine and then sort of get them maybe up to, like, 12, because they can... And there's a lot of classes that get some really fun stuff around that time. So if I've, if they if they know what they're kind of... If I get a vibe that they know what they're doing, I'm like, okay, maybe we'll bump it up a little bit and uh, punish myself a little bit, because <laughs> it definitely <laughs> gets a little bit like that over level nine i find yep we uh, generally run them really low we run them at like level three because we run horror and we want them uh squishy survival and horror scared. <laughs> no yep. more no less yep <laughs> <laughs> Yep, absolutely. It, it, it is the, that is a very common misconception, especially because I do so much level twenty. Is people are like, "Ooh, that's so difficult." I'm like, "No, the game's much harder at the beginning when a goblin Ooh. with an axe can crit and take your head off, and there's nothing you can do." About it. The hard part's there. You're playing rocket tag as gods at the high level. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. um, well, here is our Travis specific question: Is what is this is from Vossner? Uh, what is your favorite character that you have played, and why? Ooh, I rarely get to play a, a fiend, a shapeshifter known as the silent one, and it's usually acting as someone else, and it's usually going to ruin your day, and it always ends its interactions with you with, do you seek him? And then that's when everyone gets really upset, and the hurdy-gurdy music comes in, and then I get to smile and stab them. Or I play a dead corpse, <laughs> and then they're like, oh, it's a corpse, let's let's loot the bodies. Nope, it was the silent one. <laughs> uh, excellent. Uh, we, we got one more that came in here um which uh does anybody have any from from margaret parson does anybody have any fancy stories from the barovian ball i mean alquin and i served looks that that happened 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. You, well, we always serve looks. That's that's not notable. But um, I do remember uh, back in 2019, uh, Mark Mir uh, was running a Ravenloft uh, uh, game, or it had elements of Ravenloft in it, and he has this Azalin the Lich, uh, you know, sort of Strahd's arc enemy rival uh, character that he does. And he likes to introduce some sort of outside the game kind of LARP context stuff for some of his players. Uh, and I was Strahd at that ball. So he had his players come and meet me. Uh, and there were these kind of other interactions. Um, so sometimes the ball does have that stuff, um, especially now that we've integrated it with the sort of like night of trials sort of thing with a lot of extra activities, like some of the, you know, the NPCs that people have talked about giving out clues that we've, we fed them for their players. Um, but yeah, I, it, a lot of a lot of questions people ask. There's a there's a, a banquet dinner, and then there's also a ball that are on uh, two different nights, and they're like, which one should I dress up for? And our answer is a uh, both, yeah. <laughs> basically. Um, yeah. I think I, there's definitely an opportunity to dress up as your character, either at your table or at that ball, uh, or if you know if you have formal wear. I've seen some incredible costumes that people have brought um and sometimes they're not even you know necessarily fantasy costumes they're just really cool formal outfits or military uniforms so it's kind of napoleonic or regency sort of things um yeah there's there's a lot of fanciness uh and a lot of it's brought by the the players although there are there have been some dms who who dressed up pretty fancy i remember guy had a pretty good outfit uh earlier this year for for one thing <laughs> You had a very beautiful uh, cloak. Uh, I know, Guy, I know you said you were going to say something there. So, Lex, I'm actually going to hand this to you to start wrapping us up. So, here's what I'm going to ask from everybody. So, Guy, if you want to say something about the banquet, that's cool. But, um, you know, who, who you are and where people can find you. And if you had one last parting thing to say about D&D in a castle. And we'll we'll go back around the horn from the way you are on my screen here. So, there you go, Guy. All right, perfect. So, yes, from the ball, I think... My my experience is I'm left-handed and I have two right-handed feet that neither of them know how to dance. And there's a dance that you do. And I was terrified. Uh, but I had players who were Renaissance dancers and stuff. And, and it was an amazing experience to have been their DM and then to have them kind of saying, well, if you actually count this way or if you do this. Or, and I actually got... I, I I didn't get good at dancing, but I actually started to love it. I'm like, hey, this is fun. Can we do another dance? I want to learn how to do this or do that without stabbing, smacking, or hitting someone, which is what I started uh, with. But anyway, um, so my name is Guy, and you can find me if you just type in uh, how to be a great GM on socials and specifically on YouTube. You will find me there, and uh, content comes out weekly, and I'm currently doing a live show with uh, Jeremy Cobb down there. Uh, on Thursday night, so if you want to see us playing together, um, that's one of the great unions that came out of uh, Dindina Castle, as a matter of fact. Excellent. Speaking of Jeremy, uh, Jeremy. Oh, hello, <laughs> my name is Jeremy Cobb. Uh, I You can find me on Twitter at Jeremy Cobb one That's Cobb with two Bs and the number one. I'm also on Hive, although I haven't really posted much there yet. It's mostly just a, a life raft. Uh, <laughs> and I also am on Instagram. I don't remember what my Instagram is, but I have over 106 followers. I'm trying to get as many followers as I can before posting any any actual images on Instagram uh, or e ever saying the name of it. Uh, and you can also follow Three Black Halflings on Twitter, on uh, YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, at three, it's number three, Black Halflings. Uh, go check us out. Excellent. Uh, Travis and Caitlin. Uh, we are... I'm Caitlin Stats. I'm Travis Fengroff. And we are Fool and Scholar <laughs> Productions. Uh, you can find our D&D podcast, Dark Dice, on Twitter at D&D, or at, at Dark, Dark Dice, Dice Pod. Pod. Yeah. Oh, gosh. And then I'm also, sure <laughs> uh, you can, on Twitch, uh, .tv slash Fool and Scholar, if you yeah. like watching people edit D&D podcasts. <laughs> it's it's a lot of learning sound design if you're into that. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. as far as uh, something to say about D&D in a castle at the very end is uh, hope to see you there. Excellent. <laughs> it is a very fancy affair. Just for the record, if the dancing seems stressful, dressing up seems stressful, you don't have to do either of those things. It's all optional, which everybody's there to have a good time. Don't let that be a barrier. It's it's just a fun thing. All right, Alquin. 
Uh, hi, I'm Malcolm Gersh. You can find me on most social media under that name or under different elves. Uh, I'm in a, a, a bunch of actual play uh, series, some, some of which are, are with B. Dave, so which there are VODs uh, for. So if you want to go check those out and watch our, our, our friendship grow over the years, that's that's an option. Um, I'm going to share what I'm most looking forward to, uh, and it's actually the campaign I'm going to be running, which I'm announcing here for the first time. There are still tickets available for my table in March if you want to sign up. And I'm running, based on my background, you can see I'm running uh, Mythic Odysseys of Theros, designed by another alum of the castle. One of the lead designers in it is James Wyatt, who uh, I think is also uh, uh, performing this year but um i think his table might be sold out so if you want to run if you want to play in some of his stuff if you didn't get into his table maybe you should come and get mine uh it's going to be a uh, high level uh classical greece inspired uh tragedy basically about a uh kind of inspired by marvel's eternals the idea of a sort of dysfunctional family of, of demigods who are uh, kind of getting back together to try to deal with some of the baggage uh that the 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 public doesn't know about to them they're just heroes so um so yeah if you uh, sign up for my game in march that's what you're gonna get and i, I promise i will i will be mean to you but you will love it <laughs> that is I've, i have never been more proud of you ever in my life than i am at this exact second that sounds so beautiful yeah uh, all right. uh chris Lindsay. Um, well, online, uh, I don't post frequently, <clears throat> uh, uh, but you can find me on Instagram at ravens underscore watching. Um, that said, uh, after this, I don't, I'm not playing anything online at this moment because I have to go back into the workshop and continue making the games that we all love. So that is, that is my, my burden to bear, of course, and, uh, I will do so with great alacrity, but uh, in the meantime, if you want to come and play with me at the Indiana Castle in March, it will be grim, it will be dark, it might be extra planar, and it uh, will be a blast. Um, uh, come and see me. Excellent. Uh, and last but not least, Jasper. Hey, so yeah, I've been Jasper William Cartwright. Uh, you can follow me on social medias at JW underscore Cartwright. Uh, Jeremy's already done all the plugs for Three Black Halflings. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and wrap up by saying uh, I think D&D The Castle is a truly unique event where people work so, so hard to make such a unique and awesome uh, thing happen that just doesn't happen anywhere else. So come and hang out with all of us amazing people because they're all amazing and I've met them and they've great so i'm i'm so excited let alone the players uh how excited they must be so come join us uh excellent um well right here at the very last second we got a few more questions and i'm a shotgun and then we're going to close it out here uh from dan greenfield if a player has an idea that you as a dm really like but it doesn't meet the current setup like a monster outline not outlined as a pc playable race do you allow it at uh, dm's discretion just ask uh, Cameron Golden, what qualities most impress you about players and characters? Uh, everybody was beautiful in their own way. That seems like a cop out, but it really was true. Um, what's your favorite classic character and why? I'm sure all of us have answered that on the social medias, and that's a to that's a whole topic in and of itself. Um, so, uh, at Warlock. least for me, the, the answer, answer is Morlock. Multi-class, you know, my, my main freely is a bard, paladin, warlock, sorcerer, so there you go. And I, I recently played uh, with Jasper, a uh, arcane trickster, blade singer, paladin that was just absolutely disgusting. So that's, I'm, I'm, always, I'm, I'm always making up weird combinations. But me, <laughs> uh, me, B. Dave Walters, uh, all over the socials, everywhere. Again, got uh, pro DMing and pro uh, player content pinned at the top of my Twitter for as long as the servers stay up at B. Dave Walters. Uh, the thing I'm most excited about at the next d and in a castle is seeing you there. And one other face I'm looking forward to is Justin, who is one of our production overlords, who I'm going to turn it over to close us out. Thank you all for tuning in and spending this time with us today. Wow. Thank you so much, B-Dave, for leading us through that and being our host here today at Ask Me Anything with D&D in a Castle. As B-Dave said, I'm Justin Coates, General Manager here at D&D in a Castle. It'll be my pleasure to welcome you all and to take care of you if you do come out to uh, play at any of these fantastic tables that are available to you at, uh, in March or in any future round, even if you're saving up for 2024. So it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you all each individually for taking the time to be here to be part of our Ask Me Anything and it's great to know that uh, that you are so 
um, ready to answer the questions of Dianne and Castle from your experiences here at the Castle. And we can't wait to give you our audience experiences here at the Castle that are just as awesome. So thank you so much once again, all. And with that, we bid you adieu. Thank you.